I'm excited to see this thing go. Everybody wants to see this go. But I can't start it until I get this Evans coolant in here. Everybody knows I run this stuff. The Evans Power Sports coolant. So we're gonna fill this up. There's a lot of cooling in this sled. I've got the front tunnel cooler. I've got the rear double pass cooler that was supplied by Van Amberg Enterprises. And there's a lot of routing of the hoses. It's got the rail coolers as well. So there's a lot of cooling. It's probably gonna take quite a bit of coolant. And the hardest part that everybody asks me about is, you know, how do you burp the sled? How do you get all the air out? Well, I'm gonna show you what I do to make that happen. And a lot of times when people say, you know, I think my engine blew because I had an air pocket in it. I don't think that that's usually your problem. I've never had an issue uh, priming a sled or putting coolant in it. It's just not that hard to do. So I'm gonna show you what to do. So I'm gonna use my Evans waterless coolant because it's such an amazing thing. No pressure in the system. You guys know all this. There's no water in it, so there's no pressure. It doesn't start to boil until 360 degrees. Now this is clear, this fluid. Their uh, other type that they have, their high performance, MPG Plus is colored, kind of a yellow or a straw colored. This will start to change color actually very quickly. So I'll know that it's, uh, in there, and moving around. You gotta see the level in your bottle, right? I've got that in there, how much is in there? Okay, that's almost full. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lower the sled, I'm gonna put a strap up top, we're gonna lift the top up. I don't wanna do this with the arms that are right here because something's gonna fall off. She's such a good looking sled. I've got that double pass cooler in the back. It's kind of like a U. So the fluid's got to go down and in and around and the back out and then up the sides. It's got to get through those rails. Any portion of this snowmobile that is higher than this coolant bottle is going to affect the way that the coolant goes in. If there's something that's higher than this coolant bottle, you're never going to get the air out. Right now, I want to fill up those coolers. I hope that strap doesn't break. But it's got a pretty good suspension on it, so I think it would be okay. Now, not everybody has a lift at home that you can do this. I can hear it glugging out there right now. Come look at this. Come, come quick. So the coolant's going back in through these rails and in through that U cooler, getting pumped in and around through. So I gotta get some more in there. So as I was saying, if you don't have a sled lift or car lift like this, which most people don't, all you gotta do is just run it up a bank, let it sit there for a second, burp the cap a little bit, then you can back it down, you can back it up, you can move it forward, you can do whatever, just check the level of your bottle, and after the first few runs, you wanna make sure that your level is staying constant and that it's still not burping. You wanna also look underneath, make sure there are no leaks. Now this isn't colored, but it's gonna start to color itself. Uh, somebody says, you know, if it's not colored, how do you know if it's leaking? Well, don't forget, that since there's no water in here, it's not gonna be blowing off a lot of pressure. It's not gonna be really pounding out of there. The only real way that you're gonna get a leak with this is if you puncture something or you haven't tightened up a strap or a band or a clamp or whatever. So where are we now? There's my level. I'm gonna just lift up a little bit more. Looks good. Now I'm gonna lower it. Hear that? More bubbles. That's good. Yeah. 
hear that back there. I'm going to run through this one more time. And we're going to run it up, get the coolant circulating through there. I think we probably got it. It's good. Now I know because of the way that we had to plumb this whole system with the little ups and downs and the way that this was built, because most IQRs don't have, well, all of them, they don't have uh, the cooling system running through the rails. There we go, it's still going in, I can hear it. It's awesome. Let me see how we're doing in here. It's good for now. I'm just going to run it for a second. Started up pretty darn easy. That's a good thing. I'm just going to check that. Look at that. Bottle is empty. Now this one has color in it. This is the NPG Plus, which is, just comes in a bigger bottle, more or less. Start that up. See how that goes. Sucked it right up. That's good. Getting that air out. That's good. Going down, that means. We're doing something right, and it's not ending up on the floor too badly. Interesting. I was wondering why my kill switch wasn't working, and when I had this all apart, I hooked the brake up to the kill switch and the kill switch up to the brake light. <laughs> so I just pressed the brake and it shut off. Okay, so where are we at? That's looking pretty good right now. Right now I've got half a bottle of coolant. I'm gonna box everything up, do a couple of other odds and ends, and then uh, take it out and run it up. Come back, check the coolant level. Now since I'm running Evans in this, I'm gonna tell everybody that I am, you know, if you're running this in your car, your UTV, your ATV, your truck, whatever, it's always good to put this little label on your bottle, under your hood, somewhere. That more or less tells them that you don't add water to that. If you need to add water to the Evans coolant, you can. It's kind of like other coolants in that way. You can add water to it. If you're stuck, you're in a bind, you don't have anything, you're on the trail, something happens, you puncture a line, the clamp is loose or whatever. You can add water to it, get it home, drain the system, take the coolant out, and you can boil off the water. Put it back in and you're good to go. If you put water in it and leave it in there, then you're losing the effect of the Evans coolant. You're, you know, you're creating uh, uh, pressure in the system. It's going to be corrosive again, and you know what? You're lowering the boiling point of the coolant. You don't want to do that. So you want that Evans waterless coolant working for you. You know, it doesn't boil up to 360 degrees, and it's an amazing thing. I don't know if you've seen the XLT video. I ran it up to 330 degrees, and then the hoses just started melting. It was pretty intense. That was 20 minutes stationary, no coolers installed. It was just one looped pipe from one side of the motor right to the other. 
and the motor was fine. Pretty crazy. That's why I'm running it in this. That's why I run it in my UTV. That's why I run it in my trucks, everything else.